Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, we're going to discuss solving equations, which is something you have to be proficient at in order to be successful on the Mathematics Knowledge Subtest of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to start today's video by briefly discussing uh, what I mean by solving linear equations. And then after that, I'm going to devote the majority of this video to working on practice problems. Uh, in my opinion, the only way to become proficient at solving equations is to practice as much as possible. And so in light of that, I encourage you to do as many of these practice problems on your own scratch paper as possible. Uh, more specifically, I recommend that once I read a question, you pause the video, attempt to work out the question on your own scratch paper, and then resume playing the video to see if you and I came up with the same answer in the same way. So all that said, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. As I mentioned, I briefly want to discuss what I mean by solving linear equations, and then we'll get into the uh, meat and potatoes of this video. So the goal of solving a linear equation is to find the value of the variable that will make the uh, statement or equation true. Uh, more specifically, in order to do that, you're going to perform operations on both sides of the equation in order to isolate the variable. In many of my videos, I always say, uh, since we're solving for x, we want to get x equal to something by itself. That's exactly what we're doing when we're solving uh, equations. You want to isolate the variable such that this becomes a true statement. Okay, and to do that, you use multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Okay, so that's all I mean by solving linear equations. Uh, before we get started, I do want to point out that linear equations have a variable raised to the first power. So x plus 5 is a linear equation, whereas x squared plus 5 is a quadratic since its uh, power is 2, as you can see. So just bear in mind that all the equations we're going to solve today are linear equations, which means that their variable is raised to the first power. So all that said, let's go ahead and get started with the practice problems. As I mentioned, the only way to become proficient at solving linear equations is to practice as much as possible. And in light of that, I'm going to work out every other odd problem uh, on this left-hand side of the screen. Uh, that should be enough. Uh, for you to determine whether you're proficient at solving these linear equations or if you need more practice. If for some reason you need more practice, just leave a comment in uh, the comment section below and I'll create another video in which I work on these problems. So all that said, let's get started and I'm going to try to zoom in so that if you're viewing this video on a mobile device, uh, you can see it pretty clearly. So number one says 4x equals 4. So let's go ahead and write that down. 4x equals 4. Uh, in this case, we want to get x by itself. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to divide both sides by 4. And in doing so, that's going to cross out here, which will leave us with x equals 4 over 4, which is just 1. Okay, so that was number 1. Let's go ahead and work on number five now. And again, as we uh, work on more and more of these practice problems, you'll see that they get slightly more difficult. So number five says 2x plus 4 uh, equals 8. Uh, again, we want to solve for x, but that said, unlike in the first problem, we have this plus 4 hanging out here. So I'm going to move it to the other side of the equal sign by doing the opposite of addition, and I'm going to subtract it from both sides. Uh, this is going to cross out since positive 4 minus 4 is 0, leaving me with 2x on this side. 8 minus 4 is just 4. Now to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. This will cross out, leaving me with x equals 4 divided by 2, which is just 2. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to number 7, or number 9 since we're doing every other odd. All right, number nine says negative x equals negative 12. So that's negative x 
equals negative 12. In this case, it might not be obvious that uh, there's a negative 1 in front of this negative x. So if it's helpful, you could rewrite this as negative 1 times x equals negative 12, uh, which means in order to get rid of this negative, we're just going to divide both sides by negative 1. This will cross out, leaving us with just x on this side. Negative 12 divided by negative 1 is going to be positive 12. Uh, in case you need help with uh, multiplication and division involving positive and negatives, let's quickly take a look at the signs chart again. Let me go ahead and write that out for you, since we're going to need it for a few other problems. Okay, so this is the signs chart. This is your first term, your second term, and the result. And as I mentioned, it's only applicable for uh, multiplication and division. Uh, and this is how you use it. If you have a positive number times a positive number, the product is going to be positive. If you have a positive number divided by a positive number, the result's going to be positive. In this case, you can see that we have negative 12, which is negative, divided by negative 1, which is negative, and those are our first and second terms respectively. So we know the result's got to be positive according to this science chart, okay? Again, uh, your goal should be to have this, uh, uh, to know the science chart like it's second nature. You shouldn't have to write this out every time to solve these, okay? So we're gonna move on to number 13. And number 13 is uh, 3x plus 2x plus 6 equals negative 15. Uh, in this case, you can see that we have like terms on this left-hand side of the equal sign. So as our first step, we can simplify this equation by combining those like terms. That is, we can add 3x and 2x together. 3x plus 2x is 5x. Of course, we have plus 6 there and negative 15 over there. So now we're just going to move 6 to the other side, which will enable us to solve for x. So we're going to do that by subtraction. P plus 6 minus 6 is 0. So this is 5x equals uh, negative 15 minus 6, which is going to be negative 21. Now we're going to divide both sides by 5. And in doing so, that's going to cross this out, leaving us with x equals negative 21 over 5. Since these don't have any common terms that we can use to simplify this fraction, uh, our final result is the fraction negative 21 over 5. And generally, when you solve equations, you don't have to simplify fractions by doing long division. So we can leave our answer as this. Let's go ahead and move on to 17 now. Uh, 17 is 4 plus 3 times x plus 2 in parentheses equals 10. Uh, in this case, you can see that we have a set of parentheses, and according to the order of operations, we do have to address this multiplication uh, by distributing this uh, 3 to this x and 2 as our first step. Again, the order of operations is parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. More often than not, people remember this, uh, the order of operations with the mnemonic device. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And what the order of operations tells you is the order in which you work out problems like these. You do what's in parentheses first if possible. Then you do exponents if there are any. Then you do multiplication and division from left to right as they appear. And then you do addition and subtraction from left to right as they appear. If we take a look, we can see that inside parentheses we have uh, x plus 2, which aren't like terms, so there's nothing we can do there. If we scan this equation very quickly, we can see that there are no exponents we have to simplify. But that said, uh, when we get to multiplication, we can see that we have 3 times x and 3 times 2. So as our first step, we're going to distribute this 3 to this x and this 2. So this is just going to be 4 plus 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 2 is 
6 equals 10. Okay, let's combine like terms. 4 and 6. 4 plus 6 is just 10. So this is 3x plus 10 equals 10. Okay, we want to get x by itself. So as our next step, we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. This is going to cross out, leaving us with just 3x equals 10 minus 10 is 0. Uh, now we're going to divide both sides by 3. This is going to cross out, leaving us with x equals 0 divided by 3, which is 0. Let me point this out since it might not be obvious. 0 divided by anything is always 0. Uh, a whole number or anything divided by 0 is no solution. Okay, so in this case, we had 0 divided by 3, which we saw was 0. If we had, however, uh, 3 divided by 0, we would have to realize that this would have no solution. Okay, so important difference there to mention. Let's move on to 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, 21 is 2x plus 6 equals 3x plus 9 minus 3. All right, so uh, in this case, we can see that we have our variable on both sides of the equal sign as well as whole numbers on both sides of the equal sign. So in order to do this one, at some point, we're going to have to make some rearrangements in this equation. That said, we can see we have 9 and negative 3 right here, which are like terms. So to start, I'm going to simplify this by doing 9 minus 3. And so let's just copy everything else down as is. 9 minus 3 is simply 6. Okay, so uh, now let's uh, get the x's on one side of this equation and the whole numbers on the other side. So let's go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides. This is going to cross out, leaving me with just 6 over here. 3x minus 2x is just x plus 6. And let's uh, get x by itself by subtracting 6 from both sides. This is going to cross out, leaving me with just x on this side. 6 minus 6 is 0. In math, it's customary to write the variable for which you solved on the left. So we're going to write x equals 0. So in this case, x equals 0. That's our solution. Let's go ahead and move on to 25. 25 is 4 times 2x minus 3 plus 4 equals 8x minus 8. Okay, uh, in this case, we can see we have a lot going on. But according to the order of operations, we're going to have to do uh, this multiplication first. Specifically, we're going to have to distribute this 4 to this 2x as well as this negative 3. So we're going to distribute 4 to 2x and negative 3. Uh, 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And this is plus 4 equals 8x minus 8. All right, so let's simplify things before we move on. Uh, as we can see, we have negative 12x plus 4, which are like terms, so we can simplify that. This is going to be 8x. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8 equals 8x minus 8. Okay, let's uh, rearrange this so that we have uh, x's on one side of the equation and whole numbers on the other side of the equation. So I'm going to start by subtracting 8x from both sides. Uh, this crosses out, and 8x minus 8x is 0. Uh, and let's add 8 to both sides now to get uh, the whole numbers on the other side of the equation. This crosses out. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So in this case, we have 0 equal 0, which means that there are infinitely many solutions. In other words, uh, no matter what you plug in for x, uh, the solution is going to work. So in this case, there are infinitely many solutions. Okay, And just as an example, uh, you can plug a number in for 
x and you'll see that no matter what you plug in uh, the statement's going to be true let's go ahead and move on to number 29 29 is 4 x minus 3 minus x minus 5 in parentheses equals 0. Okay, so uh, in this case, it should be clear that we have to take care of uh, multiplication before we can simplify this one. More specifically, we're going to have to distribute this 4 to this x as well as to this negative 3. And similarly, uh, you can imagine there's a negative 1 right here, which means we also have to at the same time distribute negative 1 to x and negative one to negative five. So let's go ahead and do those two things. Four times x is four x. Four times negative three is negative 12. Negative one times x is negative x. Negative one times five, negative five is positive five. This of course all equals zero. Let's combine our like terms. As you can see, we have four x and uh, negative x. 4x minus x is 3x. And then we have uh, negative 12 and positive 5. Negative 12 plus 5 is going to be negative 7. Let's move uh, 7 to the other side of this equation so we can get x by itself. We're going to do so by addition. This becomes 3x equals 7. Let's divide both sides by 3 now to get x by itself. This crosses out, leaving you with x equals 7 thirds. And as I mentioned, we can leave this in fraction form since uh, we're just solving linear equations here. All right, let's go ahead and erase 25 and 29 so we can make uh, room for this last problem in this uh, video. That is 33. And after that, we will be done. Okay, so uh, 33, as we can see, says 9c over 10 equals 9 over 5. Uh, so let's go ahead and write that down. We have 9c over 10 equals 9 over 5. Uh, in order to clear these uh, fractions, we have to multiply uh, both fractions by their greatest common factor. In this case, 10 and 5 share a common factor of 10. So if I multiply both sides by 10, we'll see that that can clear the fractions in this case. That is, this 10 will simply cross out, leaving you with just 9c over here. Whereas uh, we can reduce this 9 over 5 times 10 like this. Again, this is the same as multiplying 9 over 5 times 10 over 1. Again, to make any fraction a whole number, you, or to make any whole number a fraction, you simply place it over 1, which will enable us to reduce this fraction like this. 5 goes into 5 one time, 5 goes into 10 two times. Uh, so in other words, this is the same as 9 times 2, which is just 18. And now we can simply divide both sides by 9, which will leave us with c equals 18 divided by 9 are just 2. All right, so that's it for today's video. Uh, if for some reason you struggled as uh, you worked on these practice problems, uh, that means you're not yet proficient at solving these equations. And if you leave me a comment down in the comment section below uh, asking for another video on this, uh, I'd be more than happy to make one. That said, if you worked on uh, these problems and you had no issues whatsoever, that probably means you're pretty proficient with algebra. And in light of that, you can spend the rest of your time uh, learning uh, other topics that appear on the ASVAB. Um, I hope you found this content helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, but on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.